Tim with Online Big Blue right now. That's the way I feel because I was looking at the paper. I was reading the paper. I was reading the internet. I'm looking at everything Giants related, and I see an article that pops up that says Nate's the better player. Nate Solder plays better than Matt from Connecticut does. From Rob Sale, we're playing the best players right now. Matt is not one of them. Yowza. I know Carl Banks had put something out on Twitter that uh, some people thought it was mean that he said that, you know, and I've heard worse. And I know Carl's probably heard worse, too. (laughs) I've heard worse being in college locker rooms and NFL locker rooms. I think the players already know this. It's not like we're extolling the virtues of something that hasn't been told to the player. So it's not a big deal. Just the but just the fact that they think Nate Solder is better than Matt from Connecticut. That just that just that just that just scares me. That just scares me. It just scares a ton out of me. Matt had opportunities. We're playing the best players that we think can give us a chance to win at the position. Nate, in my opinion, in our opinion, is playing better. He is he is perfect. No, nobody's perfect, but he gives us the best chance to win. Did they see the play where Nate was facing the wrong direction a couple of weeks ago when someone went around him? He was blocking backwards. That might be a new technique. Block backwards. This kind of leads into my one point. The giant organization, and, and it's not just this regime, does not cultivate players. They don't build players. They don't, they don't draft players and then make them, and not saying all, but the majority of their project picks never work out. And I've said this before. I said this when they drafted, I said this when they drafted Matt. I've said this when they drafted Shane Lemieux and other people, and I got blasted for it. it looks like I'm right. Giants drafted for, uh, for player potential, not immediate talent that could help build the organization and play right away, but guys that they felt two, three years down the road would, would gel into something, and that's not the way to win football now. And, and I said it when they drafted Matt. I said I understood the pick. He is a guy that has projected talent, but he would be at least three, four years away from maybe getting into the starting lineup. And people are like, you don't know football. You're crazy. Yeah, okay. All right, whatever. That's what I love it because uh, I love it because people are like, you're always wrong. No, I'm not. That's the problem. Go back and listen. Go back and watch. Go back and see what I say. That's the beauty of, of the internet. It's all there. I said multiple times that Matt is not ready for primetime coming out of Connecticut. He was going to take three to four years. And the idea with this organization and this regime right now is they're not cultivating this talent that you can draft projected talent all you want. But the problem is you have to develop it. You don't develop it. All you're doing is wasting picks. Oh, Shane Zimenez, I'm staring at you. Oh, Shane, can you see? Because you're not on the field. You're Lorenzo Carter, uh, I, and people are like, some of them were injured. Yeah, some, a lot of times they weren't injured. Daniel Jones. I'm, look, I'm, look, I'm looking at you guys. And then for Rob Sale to come out and say he gives us the best opportunity to win, how bad must Matt be? I love it because I did a pro football focus breakdown. The snaps was sold at uh, 863 or 80, uh, 683 to 241s for Matt. The pro football focus grading. Is Solders at a 55 and Matt's at a 63 for overall blocking. Solders at a 48, Matt's at a 61. Blocking efficient, pass blocking efficiency. This is where you got to be crazy because if you think Nate Solders at a 95.9 and 96.1 in reference to blocking efficiency and reference to pass blocking, you you might as well just stop even looking at Pro Football Focus because that, that just tells me how much more of their idiocy they have and the, the, that they are. It's crazy, but the th- I mean, how bad must Matt really be in practice and, and on the game time that they, they think Nate Solder's a better player? Glad we didn't draft that Parsons kid. I mean, he sucks in Dallas. Almost makes you want to go out and buy another, a Dallas number 11 jersey to think what might have been a giant, another great giant linebacker. I love the fart, the fact, the fart, the fart, the fart. I just want to say fart. I love the fact that uh, talking about Kenny G and Targets and Freddie Kitchens, how they're getting along better. How it's more of a symbolic relationship that they're getting the ball. He had seven opportunities last week. And three of them were in the end zone. And he, he didn't progress on any of those. So, I mean, yeah, okay, that experiment's working out great. 
Let's hope it turns out better in Miami, but I'm very concerned about Miami. And I've said that before, and we'll talk about that on Sunday at 1030. But, you know, we and I, this kind of all leads to what I want to talk about, and it's nothing personal. It's nothing that I'm, I'm sitting here saying that, uh, you know, I, it's nothing that I'm saying that is, is, is not, has not been said before, but they got to fire Joe Judge. Joe Judge needs to be gone after the end of the season. I know people say, you can't have a revolving door over two years of head coach. Well, you can if you keep making mistakes. This guy preaches this, he preaches that, but he doesn't do anything about it. He blames everyone else for he he says the fit the heads the fish stinks from the heads down and he blames everyone else for his failures. He doesn't understand timeout management. He doesn't understand clock management. He doesn't understand when to throw the red flag. At times, I don't think he has control of his own locker room or 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 the team does not not um, I'm not gonna say respect him, but they don't follow him. There are there are certain head coaches that are leaders that teams rally around. But there's also certain coaches that are just not. And I don't think he's built. And, and I've said this before. When you come up as the stereotypical head, tough guy head coach, you have to win. And you have to win quickly because you will lose the locker room, you will lose the fan base, and you will lose your job. And to think that he is not on the hot seat right now, the problem is with the Giants, they drafted a coach that needed to learn on the head coach that needed to learn on the job. And that is probably one of the worst things to do for an NFL organization. You get lucky at times. Don't get me wrong. You, you get lucky at times where they turn out to be something, but you also get unlucky the majority of the time. He's just not a fit for New York. He's just not a fit for this organization. And I'm telling you right now, the players, you could tell at times, I mean, they gave, the players in the Tampa game just gave up. Gave up. And I will say a lot of things about Pat Shermer. I got a lot of stuff to say about Pat Shermer. But what I have to say about Pat Shermer is, is pretty much this. If you watch the Pat Shermer games for two years, yeah, Pat Shermer was a dick. But the players never gave up on Pat Shermer. They played hard for Pat. Good or bad, right or wrong or indifferent, they actually played hard for Pat. And, and, and if you sit there and tell me they didn't, you didn't watch. You didn't watch all 32 games of Pat, the Pat Shermer regime. That is the one thing that I will say about Pat. And I've said some, I've said some horrible things about Pat. I even did a video when he was still the head coach saying Pat Shermer, a coach only his mother can love. And I went that, 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 and maybe. I love it now also how everyone's talking about this giant salary cap mismanagement. And when I've been talking about that since, oh, I don't know. <laughs> since before the draft, since before free agency how their capped allegation is, is so screwed up and, and high on four players, five players. That's like 32% of the cap for like four players. And two of them are kind of redundant. But that's okay. But that's okay. We don't know anything. Uh, just fire Joe Judge. I'm telling you right now, unless they bring in a head coach, excuse me, a GM that's familiar with Judge and wants to be the judge, and I've said it a million times, you're not going to find a quality GM where you tell them Daniel Jones is your quarterback, Joe Judge is your head coach, and you have no salary cap money. Oh my God, I want that job. (laughs) Can I sign here now? So I don't care what the outcome of the season, if Joe Judge is not on the hot seat, you cannot go into you cannot go into year three of the Joe Judge regime of the guy still learning on the job and go into year four of Daniel Jones' contract and not know what he is. And I, I know that people people are like, oh well, you know what? You don't want you don't want to do that because you know about this and this option. It could be worse than this. You know what's funny? St. Uh, St. Louis, Arizona Cardinals made a mistake with Josh Rosen. Plain and simple, made a mistake. The next year, they draft another quarterback and trade the quarterback they made the mistake on. You want to know why? Because that was guts. That was balls. That was, that was throwing caution to the wind. Knew you made a mistake, and you backpedaled and got out of it before it got worse. The Giants don't do that. They hold on for dear life to these mistakes with some hope. And I think the fear with the Giants is the fact that they are worried. 
that these mistakes are going to come back to haunt them, and that player is going to develop somewhere else and become an all-pro. I think that's the problem with Daniel Jones. And I laugh because we did a, uh, we did a roster draft breakdown, and the majority of the giant players drafted over the last five years that are not on this team are on other teams or basically on the uh, practice squad. They're not out of the NFL. They're playing for other organizations or on, or on the practice, practice squad somewhere else, but not on the Giants. So they were good enough to be contributors throughout the rest of the NFL, but not for the Giants. It is the misevaluation of the talent of this organization during the drafts over the last 10 years, which has been paramount. And I think it is the mismanagement and thought process and interviewing process of the last three head coaches that have also made the situation even worse. Just throwing that out there on a Friday. Wanted to rant a little bit. Do I think they're going to win in Miami? No. Don't think I don't think they're going to win in Miami. I don't care if Daniel Jones plays or doesn't play. I don't think they're going to I don't think they're going to win in Miami whatsoever. There's only one way that they're going to win in Miami. And I think everyone knows what that one way is. I can, you can't keep me cooped up in here, okay? I am a peacock. You got to let me fly. You got to let Mike Lennon fly. Let him fly. Let him out of the cage. What else do we got to lose? Because you know what? And I love it, too, because I, I see people like, well, if we win today, we're five and seven. We're back in the playoff picture. No, Dallas won. And all the other teams ahead of us, minus the Eagles, that we needed to, to lose won. <laughs> so, oh, oh, makes my head hurt. <laughs> makes my head hurt. And plus the Knicks lost. I'm probably pissed because of the Knicks lost. That was a good game against Chicago, but I'm not even going to get into that. I don't even want to talk about the Knicks right now. I don't want to talk about Julius Randle right now either. I don't want to talk about what's wrong with R.J. Barrett. I, I, I don't want to talk about any of that stuff. <laughs> but we'll talk about some other things. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best of New York Giants sports talk entertainment. And as always, that's my theme music. Every good hero should have some.